Hi guys, hi my fellow June bugs. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been quite some time since I last filmed a video for you guys and this is all a completely new setup. Um, a lot has changed as well since I last filmed a video. We are going to give this a go. Um, I am still testing out location, lighting and everything like that. This is a new camera as well, so do bear with me. But I was just on Instagram and I was talking about how unproductive I was and I really just wanted to get a video out and just see how, how it goes, you know. But anyways, today we are doing a handbag reveal. Um, it is an item that I've actually shared with you guys on my Instagram already. So if you don't follow me on my Instagram, please go and do so. I will put a link down in the info bar below. Um, that's probably where you get the most up-to-date content from me, um, talking about what's been going on and what's happening so um, just a quick rundown I am actually in Melbourne now I've moved currently we're in lockdown so that's that's great but um, overall it's been quite good I've, I've been really loving Melbourne just cold but yeah still pretty good nonetheless but today I actually wanted to do a reveal um, of two bags so two bags that I have actually been so totally obsessed with. If you follow me on Instagram, I 100% think that you can guess what I am about to share with you guys. So first of all, I'm going to show you the one that I have actually already revealed on Instagram. Um, and that is my little itty bitty um, Louis Vuitton Papillon in the size 19. She is the cutest little bag ever. You guys know I'm kind of obsessed with little bags um, from the Mini Speedy which I absolutely love. I saw this and I kind of had to have it. Um, long story short I've actually been on the lookout for this for quite some time. I think the first time I saw it and thought I kind of need to have it in my collection was when Holly Ann Marie, um, she did like a Louis Vuitton collection video and she has the most incredible Louis Vuitton monogram pieces and there are so many in her collection that are so so cute but I did actually see this and I absolutely loved it and I have actually been on the hunt for this since 2019. Um, at the time it actually was still pretty expensive for me, I thought. It was about $1,000, which for these vintage bags I thought was quite expensive. And I was already looking at the Louis Vuitton Noé Mini, which I didn't want to spend too much money on. I was really just, yeah, trying not to spend over 1000 for these pre-loved pieces. But <laughs> as it ended up, I spent double that. So I really should have just bought it then and there because it was in like amazing condition. But Anyways, that is the price that we pay for being a handbag lover. If you don't buy it then and there, it always goes up in price. So just bear that in mind. So anyways, this is the Louis Vuitton Papillon and it is such an itty bitty bag. It is so, so cute. I absolutely love the top handle design of this. This is perfect for me being very petite. I am five foot tall. And so this is like the perfect little hand carry. And actually it actually does fit a little bit more than the Louis Vuitton um, Nano. So if you like that one, you'd love this one. Um, this one though, you just tend to carry it as a top handle. You can actually put straps on here, but I don't think it looks as good compared to the Speedy if you were to put straps. Um, this is a very, very simple design. It's sort of just like a cylindrical little bag. Um, and then opening it up, it is sort of lined with um, leather lining. Um, now this piece I actually got from Bestier Collective because I really could not find it anywhere else. Um, at the moment with COVID, everything is really, really expensive. It's like everybody has nothing better to do than to sit at home and like shop online. So I do find that everything has been quite expensive since COVID. So the best price I actually got this for is embarrassing is actually $1,700, which I know is insane, but for me, when I want something, I just need to have it. Like it's still, it's not like I'm paying $3,000, but I know it's still really expensive considering how much these cost back in the days. But anyways, I mean, it is what it is and I still love it. So I, I don't really like, I just try not to think about it. But yeah, I got it from Vestiaire Collective. I've been buying a lot from Vestiaire um, just because it's got all the duties and taxes and um, I don't know if you guys have found, you basically have to pay for duties with every single purchase that you make and that's just a given. In the past, sometimes you sort of can get away with not 
paying it because um, I don't know, it just wouldn't be flagged. But now everything going through DHL and uh, basically everything coming in through from overseas to Australia, you do have to pay taxes on. And I just like to know how much I have to pay um, rather than calculating it. So Vestier, I find is pretty good in terms of doing that and um, yeah you don't really have to worry about paying anything extra. My latest obsession, I'm a bit careful with her though because I'm worried about the Vachetta. I absolutely love like how it's a honey colour. I don't want getting it too dark. Um, I'm really really nervous about that. It's not, this bag is not in the best condition like Honestly, you guys, there were ones that are in really, really good condition, but they were going upwards of $3,000, which is insane for this bag. This is in probably good or fair condition, but like, yeah, it's, um, it is what it is. <laughs> so that is that bag. The next item I actually have posted on Instagram before, you guys would know what it is. If I told you it was another Papillon bag, you guys can tell me in the comment section below exactly which one it is. The reason, why did I think about I think I found it on um, a vintage store's Instagram page. Like I saw it and I just sort of loved it. And honestly, right now, you guys can probably tell I'm still very much into the 2000s aesthetic. It kind of throws me back to like high school days, but then now I actually have money to buy some of the stuff that I want to buy and some of the clothes I want to wear. So it's like reliving my childhood aesthetic again, but actually being able to afford to wear the nice clothes. Well, not nice, but like, you know, to dress nicely and enjoy the fashion. So that's really, really fun for me. And I've been having so much fun with like vintage bags, obsessed, obsessed. Like, and it's funny because vintage bags have just skyrocketed. Like everyone is into vintage bags, which is like good, but also bad for us. Like vintage bag lovers who just like have been doing our thing and now everyone's getting in on the action just skyrockets the price up significantly but I just find that like there's so much more variety it's so much more exciting to find something that other people don't necessarily have and like it's even more exciting to find them at really good prices whereas you know when you go buy something brand new it's either there it's not and it's, it's one price you know so anyways this bag I have been looking at because I've been obsessed with as you guys know, like Murakami, but just generally like the Marc Jacobs era. And this isn't by Murakami. It's a Richard Prince piece. So you guys probably already know. If you do, definitely comment. And here we go. Are you ready for the most gorgeous bag ever? <laughs> da, 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 da. It is the Louis Vuitton Papillon 30. Um, and this is in the Richard Prince um, watercolor uh, edition or the aquarelle isn't she just gorgeous so this is the size 30 and this is the 19 there is one size in between which is the 26 I think but yeah this is the 30 I bought this from a Japanese reseller on eBay and again this is one of those pieces I slept on for so long like Honestly, you guys, if you find something and it's reasonably priced and it's from a like reputable website and you know it's gonna be authentic as, just get it, like just get it, honestly. So this piece I purchased obviously pre-loved and I got it for, how much did I get it for? 2,200 Australian dollars, I think, or 2,300, but yeah, it's not cheap, okay? Like for this bag, considering how much it would have cost when it was, um, first released is expensive especially considering that I saw this bag <laughs> I saw this bag uh, I think a month or two earlier for 1,600 <laughs> and I slept on it okay like the backstory is I have actually been really really into getting like limited edition prints since getting like the Murakami pieces I actually really wanted to get more and um, the one print I really wanted to get was actually the Cerise I really wanted to get it in the um, the bucket PM however they are extortionately expensive again one of those ones that I've just watch slowly increase in price and just wishing I sort of just bought it from the get-go. So when I first started looking at it, they were going for 3,500. Now, 
they're upwards of 6,000 if you can find one for a reasonable price and that's with the pouch so I kind of gave up on that but I still really wanted something a little bit different I still wanted something with the um, limited edition printing and one of the ones that I really really did fall in love with was this one so um, as I mentioned when I was when I first saw this this wasn't what I was shopping for I really just wanted to get the cerise print but then um, when I finally committed to this print thinking oh actually that is pretty dang cute it went up extortionately so this I got again 2300 is still pretty expensive but that is including taxes so you know it is what it is it's um as cheap as I could get it really but yeah this is the bag itself it's super duper gorgeous um, it's got the most amazing um, watercolor print on it. I know there is a newly released watercolor collection, but honestly, this is so much cuter. And um, I don't love the colors on that one. It's a little bit too like bright. And then the blue is not really my favorite. So um, I love this. I have actually worn this already. So, so cute. I thought that the 30 would be a little bit big on me. It is much, much bigger than the 19, obviously. But I think for the style it kind of works I can kind of wear it like this so that's been fun and it's just so fitting with the like Y2K sort of style I don't love squishing it down because I do want to keep it in good like condition um, one of the downsides of this is depending on which one you get like some of these um, round papillon bags can be really deformed on the side so I kind of want to get like a round shape organizer um, let me know if you own this bag or a papillon and um you know someone that sells like these cylindrical bag organizers because that would be one because i do really really love like the barrel shape of this i actually think it's really really cute and i kind of want to preserve it the watercolor printing on this is stunning absolutely stunning there is no chips marks wear and tear so that was really something i wanted to um keep an eye out for and then opening this bag up this is super duper spacious I've stuffed it because like I said I kind of want to keep it in good condition <gasps> oh my oh my my there is a picnic bone here I am eating that in a little while <laughs> so yeah this is what it looks like really really open and spacious and cavernous and yeah it just fits an absolute ton but yeah if you want me to do like a review on these two do let me know I just wanted to sort of do a reveal and talk a bit about them because I have been dying to share these with you guys but I kind of wanted to do a dedicated video on them because they're so so cute and yeah honestly I should just get the 26 to complete my, my collection but if you are after a papillon, I do think the 26 is a beautiful piece. Like it would be an in-between size, which would be perfect for every day. I honestly consider getting that just because it's so much more affordable and I really didn't know whether these little barrel bags would work well for me. Um, I think if you're not really into this print, like if you're not after the limited edition canvas print, then definitely get the 26 because I think that would probably be a better size. This is just, it is a little bit big. Like I kind of have no choice with the size on this one. So it had to be the 30. I would have loved it in a 26, but I kind of can't give up on the sort of the print on this. Just, it's too cute. Obviously my choice in size would definitely be the 19 because I just think it is so, so cute. But um, honestly, that I have thought about getting the 26 as well just to fit a bit more and just still have that really cute barrel bag look. But anyways, you guys, those are my two latest handbag additions. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If there are any bags you want me to do a review on, let me know. I actually do have a couple of bag reveals or bag unboxings to share with you guys because yes, my no bag ban was an absolute fail. That's did not happen to be honest it lasted for like a couple of months and then I just completely fell off so I have bags to share with you guys if you want to see them most of them are vintage honestly like I've really really been on a bit of a vintage kick so if you are interested in that do let me know I also do have a Louis Vuitton bag coming so I will film an unboxing for that one but that one I'm not actually sure whether I'm going to keep so I'm probably going to get your you guys's opinion on whether to keep it or not but that is it from me that is my handbag unboxing oh my handbag reveal I hope you guys give this video a thumbs up let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below and I do have a couple of videos that I 
filmed back in Brisbane, back when I still had black hair. Um, I don't know if you guys want to see that. If you do, let me know. Otherwise, um, do follow me on my Instagram if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with me. As always, I hope you guys are having a wonderful week or weekend, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.